guys, it is Tristan with Nerd Out's Newsstand, and me and Bianca are back for another Bad Ideas. And we are going to talk about the new C- DC Universe, Dawn of the DCU, the reboot. We're going to go through an article here and see what Dark Crisis finale has in store. And we're going to talk a little bit about where we think it could go or what could happen. But how are you today, Bianca? I'm doing good. I'm going to be drinking water throughout because, like, I don't know. I've always had this morning cough thing. It's so it's so annoying. I I get it. I <clears throat> I always have a bottle of water next to me whenever I'm streaming in the mic. If um or not streaming or recording, I'm like uh maybe if she says more than like three words, I can get a drink in real quick. <laughs> <laughs> so. I haven't looked much into this, and I know I should have beforehand. I am a bad YouTuber with, you know. Where's my stick? (laughs) But as far as this goes, how much are you familiar with? So I know going into, like, the Dark Crisis storyline and everything leading up to it. Dark Crisis, not at all. (laughs) Okay. Okay, that's fair. And that's kind of what I thought. Um, I... I've been reading it, and it's been... So it started off with Infinite Frontier. That was the first little six-issue mini. Mm -hmm. And then it led into Justice League Incarnate. That was another six issues. And now we're getting Dark Crisis, which is seven issues plus a bunch of tie-ins. Now, they've been leading up to this for, by the time this is over, two years. So my first thought about this is we're two years in, and... You know, 18, 19, 20 issues in, you better deliver. Like, (laughs) (laughs) that's a lot of time investment. That's a lot of money investment. And I do think it's going to be fronted by Joshua Williamson. I trust Joshua Williamson a lot. But that's a heavy investment to ask for your audience, right? Like, I'm enjoying it. It's had its ups. It's had its downs. These weird, it's doing these weird tie-ins. Have you seen the um, A World Without storyline where it's like a world without superman and it's him on his perfect universe or wonder woman or um aquaman and i think they just did martian manhunter also have you seen that storyline it's kind of i know of the storylines i've seen people talk about them yeah they've been okay (laughs) (laughs) and um okay to say is being honest here because the superman story was great it was wonderful it was actually getting to see um clark see john grow up so that was something that i think fans craved the aquaman was great now i just read the wonder woman one and the john jones one and it was just simply okay like without wonder woman it was full of sexism wait but what you know, a world without Wonder Woman. The whole part of like Wonder Woman's like existence by the original no. creator was blah 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 blah. You would think that if you titled something a world without, it would mean that they weren't there, right? But no, the whole book is about what if they had their own perfect world. That's that's not <laughs> right. That doesn't make any sense. Change the title. Yeah, it doesn't make sense, but it was okay. It was like Miss, uh, like Doctor Psycho was trapped in Doom's doorway, and they had to erase Wonder Woman's mind because she's the one that actually did it. And it was like it was just okay. Um, the John Jones one was he was like a HP Lovecraftian thing, and it was I don't know. Basically, they're stories that are unneeded. Like you don't need to read these storylines to understand what's happening in Dark Crisis, which is fine because there is plenty happening in Dark Crisis. That feels like a sensory overload at times. So I'm enjoying it. It's a lot about legacy. But honestly, um, it's uh, <laughs> it's not near as good as, dark, uh, as metal. It's not near as good as uh, Dark Knight's Death Metal. I love those storylines, though. I'm not going to lie. Like, the way that they're done, I love. Are you a Batman or last? Fan, are you one of those people that are like, I'm so sick of him? I mean, I have still have a lot of Batman titles. <clears throat> I'm just trying to get a lot more titles besides Batman. No, I know, but Batman Who Laughs <laughs> is such a good villain. I love him. So I'm a little biased when it comes to that. 
But I will tell you, like, straight out of the boot, I like it, but it is lackluster. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. We're getting, I guess, basically the TLDR of Dark Crisis is there is this dark army. Pariah is at the forefront. Barry Allen was missing, who was just now found. And um, Slade is on the war path trying to kill people. Like, that's kind of it in a nutshell. So <laughs> uh, let's take a look at this article and see where this dawn of the DCU is going to head us. Um, because it's beautiful art. Oh, it's Dan Moore. It's amazing. See, the thing is, it... Dang, Howell actually looks good looking. We need him on Green <laughs> Lantern. Howell's always so like vanilla, but he <laughs> looks good here. Howell Rayner, the artist. <laughs> but I, my thing is with this, before we even go into this, is I was hoping all along because of the continuity errors, because of everything, the editorial errors, because of some of the issues at DC, because we didn't know if this is, you know, this omniverse is here, but is this actually canon or is this actually canon? And how can Batman be in 74 places at the same fucking time? I was hoping this was a hard reboot and they could streamline everything. Now I know my mind goes overload when I want to know, like, actually canon, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I, I don't consider anything I would say black label canon. I know a lot of people are like, but it's the omniverse. It's the omniverse. Everything matters. Nah, not black label. Not in my book. Oh, you don't See? like black label? No, no, no. I like it, like, so Harleen, black label mm -hmm. book. That, that I consider, like, a story, you know, on its own. I don't consider that, like, canon to the harley book right now you see what i mean ah. oh hey it's solo leveling and true beauty oh yeah i'm looking at the ads. <laughs> uh the manhwa for beginners manhwa manhwa i Wah. didn't know how to say Wah. it Come on. <laughs> So it says, DC is teasing a new dawn of the universe. The epic finale of Dark Crisis on Infinite Earth number seven will usher in what's coming up for this. Uh, yes. Um, DC shared that their last issue of the massive crossover event will launch DC into an exciting new direction in 2023. And the Justice League returning. Um, okay, so spoilers. I mean, obviously we knew, but come on now. Um returning to take down Deathstroke's Dark Army once and for all. I do find it funny that, remember when they were selling it for uh, Justice League 75, that mm -hmm. the everybody was going to die? Yeah. Um, I think it was Shelby in my comment section was like, I'm calling it now. They're all just going to be in prison. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Not surprising. I'm like, every time there's death, you press X to doubt. Yeah. Yeah. And not only that, but we actually got the return of Alfred. So like nobody died. I know. I was so excited. I know it's world's finest. It's a different thing, but I was so happy. Alfred's been gone for like four years at this point. Like, okay. Like three, but still feels like forever. Thank you for bringing back Alfred and Mark Wade. We appreciate you. DC dropped a major twist when it revealed the current dark crisis was a secret. Okay, yeah, we knew all this. Um, so the shocking death, nobody was shocked. You announced it six months ahead of time. <laughs> what? I love how these articles are written. Um, Pariah kept them in pocket dimensions. That's So those pocket dimensions they're talking about are those books, A World Without Books? A World Without Books? I can't even imagine. <laughs> The books titled A World Without are the pocket dimensions for those. Because he's using okay. them to siphon off their energy, yeah. However, with the Justice League back on Earth and Dark Pariah with the Great nar Darkness soon to be defeated, the final issue crossover is set to stage what's next. Are they going to give us any idea as to what? Okay, so one good, really, really good thing that I think a lot of people are excited about is JSA returning. Woo! Are you a big JSA fan? No, but I added it to my pull list. I love Star Girl. Star Girl's awesome. I still need to watch season three. 
Um, I'm waiting. We're my sister and I are trying to catch up on uh, Superman and Lois. We're still in season one. Yeah, I only finished season one. I, I'm I'm behind on some of them, but are you waiting till all the episodes come out? My sister wants to. Yeah, that's that's smart. And then binge it. Yeah. I don't blame you. That's actually what I did. That I'm doing with Harley also. Um, in the final war, we'll begin Deathstroke and his Dark Army in the press release. Okay, so now we actually have the press release. Let's see what it says here. Um, the Dark Crisis writer um, said that the issue began with death, but it will end with life. As the end of the event will launch the DCU. And is that all we have? Is that all they're giving us? Boo. Hey, come on. We get it. You're giving us some super pretty covers. I really like that dick one. <laughs> this is so cool. I absolutely love this character. Do you know who this is? No. So, in World's Finest, there was a point when they were fighting the devil Mezha, Mezna. I'm not sure exactly mm-hmm. how to say his name. Um, when this being is so strong that it somehow... I don't remember exactly how it was. Well, regardless, it fused Batman, Superman, and Green Lantern together. And that's what you're saying. Not Wonder Woman? No. Actually, we yeah. haven't seen her in that title at all. I, I'm, like, I'm saying because um, what's right next to his thigh, I thought it was the lasso of truth. Oh, wow. You're right. Good eye. I was like, is that his other leg? But I'm like, no, his other leg's right there. And then yeah. for his gloves... Um, that seems like Aquaman oh. on one side. Now my brain goes into theory mode. This might be an extension of that character with more entombed in it. Mm-hmm. And then I was trying to see if I can find any Flash ones, but that's going to be very hard because Flash also wears red like red. Um, Superman. So mm-hmm. I was thinking maybe the shoulder pads were, but like as um, the red uh, boots. Which Superman also has. Oh, yeah, that's true. I think it would have been cool that maybe if you take out the Batman Superman logo on his chest and then just put a lightning bolt on it. That would have been really cool. Because I honestly it... do not like the symbol. <laughs> it's too oh, overcrowded. You don't? No. Oh, I like it. It almost looks like Swamp Thing. Like, I guess it could go. The Swamp Thing wouldn't make sense, but still. <laughs> but I was also thinking that. Um, like, despite it being green, there's a light. It looks lightning-y. You know, so yeah. I thought maybe that was also the Flash or something like that. I love that picture. I don't know who did it, but it's phenomenal art. I like that character, too. Like, it was just a very, like, got the job done and it's over with. But yeah. they're bringing him back. I think a lot of people really enjoyed that character. Yeah, we got John and his dad. Oh, no, his cape is gone. Mm, I posted yesterday a uh, John picture. And the first three comments were just like, mm, gay. I'm like, yeah, quite literally. What's your point? <laughs> <laughs> so here's another picture of this dude. And he does not have that, like, lasso of truth thing here that he had on his, the other photo. His fists are glowing green. So I'm just pretty confused because it's so if both of his fists are going glowing green, he most probably no, is that the ring right there on his? No, I can't tell if that's a ring or not. Yeah, it's very hard to tell. So, like, but why are his fists glowing green? Like, that's what I really want to know because I'm pretty sure that's not a move set for the green lanterns. Like, does it give you extra power? Does it give you an extra punch? Is it protective gloves? Ooh, if it was protective gloves, that'd be great. Like you're punching as hard as you can, but you won't get hurt. Yeah, that would be cool. That must be Tony Daniels. Yeah. Deathstroke looks looks cool. cool. Deathstroke does look cool. That looks in the nicest way possible. Maybe they didn't pay him enough, but that looks a little messy for Tony Daniels, but that's his signature. Uh, One thing I am confused about is like, Huh? That stroke is bleeding everywhere, and you're choosing to fist fight this guy? That doesn't seem very smart. What do you mean? What else could he do? He has a gun right there. 
Who? Deathstroke. Oh, Deathstroke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't make sense, does it? Like, it makes good action panels, but it doesn't make sense logically. Well, it's not like comics are logic-based anyway. That's true. If comics were logic-based, we'd all be in trouble. Or bored. Oh, that Wonder right. Woman's so beautiful! They must all be connecting variants, which is awesome. Beautiful. Is, uh, is that Naomi? Hmm. Wait, I'm so confused right now. Who's purple-haired guy? Uh, that's that's a Pariah. But who's the girl? Who is that? It's I think Naomi. it might be. It's not Naomi. I don't think so. She always wait, has... wait, wait. There's um, I believe there was a different Power Girl. Oh, you're right. There was. I forget her name. Oh, that would be so cool if they brought her back. Mm, Cause I remember she had like a, I think she had a similar hairstyle, yes, which I'm like, isn't that copying Bumblebee's hairstyle? But I'm like, wait, I'm thinking about the cartoon. I don't know if the comics has the same style. Yeah, that's exactly who that is. Ooh, that's a deep cut. I kind of love. Mm -hmm. I w I wonder if they're bringing her back because, um, because Power Girl is going to be in the JSA, so that's her legacy character. Ooh, very cool. Oh, since, like, um, blonde-haired um, Power Girl is from a different Earth anyway. Yeah. Ooh, this looks really cool. This must be the dark versions of them. That's beautiful. Batman's face looks so cool. Like, the mechanical. Oh, I, was, I really had it. I, I was really trying to look. I'm like, where's his face? <laughs> like, I love the gear, the mechanical kind of theme he's got going. Like... Superman's pretty much just the same. He's just a little old. He has a belt on his undies. <laughs> it's elastic now. Who's that? Who was like, you know what? We're going to put the undies on the outside and keep the belt. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good. It looks fine. It's just like. You got to add the evilness to it with a black belt. <laughs> That's right. Like they could have put black in his crest or anything. But now nah, they're like the black belt goes with anything. And then for Wonder Woman, we are, we've seen this outfit before. Mm -hmm. That's our Golden Eagle armor. Uh, I think it would have been great if it was like um, associated with like an evil color. Like uh, usually they use like red, green, yeah. or uh, purple. In the world without Wonder Woman, they had her in that white outfit that Stan Lee used in his oh. imagine. It's so pretty, but like I, I like this a lot. She almost looks like her face. Her, her Or silver. She looks, silver. She looks a little dead. A little dead. Dang, that looks so cool. I need that Batman. I need a figurine. That's I neat. I like that. I want that Wonder Dawn figurine. Is it a figurine yet? Come on, uh, Todd McFarlane. Get on it. Seriously. Okay. <laughs> so we have a synopsis here. The Great Darkness is defeated. But the final hour has only just begun between the remaining heroes and Deathstroke's dark army. Who will be left standing? What, are you kidding me? You just told us earlier in the article. Okay, sure. They need to but proceed. <laughs> um, and you know what's funny about that is um, when I had Sean Gordon Murphy on, like, sometimes as fans we get frustrated, but he, see, he said DC doesn't care about spoilers because it helps sales. Like, I almost would think... He was wrong until he started telling me what was going to happen. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm so excited. Did you hear what he was going to what's happening with the Murphy verse? No. I didn't. I know? still need to see the interview. Yeah, sure, sure. They are getting first off, you know, Harley's kids. Yes, they're getting their own spinoff. Fuck Ooh. yes. I'm so excited. Um, with their dad, who is in the Batmobile, his consciousness is in the Batmobile. So uh, <laughs> it's kind of like a weird situation that I'm going to love anyways. And then at the end of the one they're doing right now, the person that shows up is Diana. Free powers. And there's going to be this whole big thing about creating the Justice League in an instant. But Ollie's in the other room. And doesn't get power, so it's a joke throughout the entire thing. Like, <laughs> I'm so excited in the, like, I love the Murphyverse. I think it's such a good 
um, series, and it's like one of those books you can pick up every time, and it's phenomenal. But the fact that they're bringing in the Justice League just makes me that much more excited. So yeah, I kind of get why spoilers might help sales. Because I'm like, fuck yes, I'm in. You know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah, I do. So it says, the Justice League and the Infinite Earths have returned, but at what cost? Do not miss the shocking conclusion. Okay. All right. That told Do us not miss nothing. this shocking conclusion. That legitimately told us nothing. <laughs> uh, to be honest, I would have done research, but I was think I thought when we were talking about the reboot and all that stuff, I thought we were talking about the movies, not the comics. <laughs> so oh I sent God. you the wrong article. <laughs> oh my God. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, we were just, uh, we were on the wrong wavelength with that and with times and, uh it was my fault. <laughs> Let me see if Newsarama knows anymore. They did create, at the end of issue number four, like a dark multiverse, but like a different dark multiverse. I feel like it's been, they've been doing this like dark multiverse for like three or four times. And I don't know um, where they're going with it. Because we had those Scott Snyder books. The Dark Multiverse. Mm -hmm. But we never had uh, anything after that mini happened. And it was called literally the Dark Multiverse. And now we have another one. So this, let's see what this one has to say. How will this uh, complete it or not in the new Golden Age? Okay. Um. It's just gonna introduce the characters. Stop it. Stop it. It's not that like it's not that hard to figure out. And I and I do think uh that's kind of the best thing, in my opinion, is that we get these characters uh back. No, oh, you won't let me open it. Okay, fine. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out who everyone is. A new a new huntress outfit. That's what I was wondering. I'm like, is that Huntress? It isn't. I don't think I like it, <laughs> but I feel like I would have to see a different angle. Yeah, it's oh, this is gonna sound dickish, but it's really, really covering, and it's not very like like we're we're I don't know be the crop. It's a gigantic purple splurge on there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not. Is that Batwoman as Wildcat? I sure hope not. I thought it was. Yo, I mean, I'm assuming they're bringing back Yolanda. Well, she has red hair and pale red. white skin, but like the vampire look Batwoman has. Ugh. Which is why I'm I never wanted gonna, to I... read her comics. I'm like, girl, you look like a vampire. I don't want to see that. <laughs> yeah, I, I you, the best Batwoman comics are still going to always be by J.H. Williams. So pretty. Um... They're saying Joshua Williamson just announced a creator-owned content on Substack just days before this. So, is he not going to be the one at the front of this? Like, I don't know. It's irritating. Do we really, like, do we, we do. We need a full, a full-on reboot. Um, and... One thing that I want kind of to note here is, do you remember how they sold this whole thing on Legacy? Mm-hmm. It was like, you know, Future State Justice League was going to take over and we were going to have this new Justice League and it was so exciting. If you look at these covers, the ones that they put together, it's all your normal players. And I'm fine with that. I'm not saying that. But they sold this on an idea that didn't pan out. Like, they were talking about Jonathan Kent, Nubia, Yara, Floor, Jace, Joe Mullian, Jackson Hyde, etc. But now you have the classic big six back. Uh, Clark, Bruce, Diana, Arthur, Hal, and Barry. Um, I don't know why I don't like the Superman blue variant cover. I feel like everybody else matches except his. Yeah. No, it's like, like if you look at everybody like, else, yeah, like everybody else has some sort of shade, and his is just all blue. It's like, put a blue filter on him. Yeah. So, why 
did they sell us? Again, I know it's comics and they're going to do this, but why did they sell us on idea of legacy to go back to the classic? You see how that could be irritating? <laughs> what? To trick us. Also, yeah, that's another good point. They have uh, uh, that Champion of Shazam book. I have the first two issues. I haven't read it yet. Um, but where we have Mary taking over for Shazam, but we know by the end that that's not going to matter. DC needs to fix their crappity crap. So my issue with this, with all of this, is when is it going to matter? When are you going to take the iron and straighten all of this out? Like, I initially, when it came to um, World's Finest, like, I love that book. I'm not saying anything bad about it. But I thought it was Elseworlds story. I it's didn't not? Know it. No. I thought, th I thought the exact same thing until they said that book was the one to bring back Alfred. Uh, I don't get it. I don't get how... We can have, like, I don't know. It's frustrating, I guess, as a fan. And I think it's also part of why I've dropped a lot of titles. Like, I still read a lot, but there's a books that I just completely ignore, like um, Urban Legend, like Batgirls, half the time Wonder Woman at this point, because Becky Clinton and Michael Conrad drive me crazy. The story just goes in circles. Like, at what point are you going to make it matter? Because it doesn't feel like Arthur Curry has mattered in well over a year. It doesn't feel like Barry Allen. Like, presumably that's who's on that. Is cover. it Wally West? <laughs> yeah, maybe it is Wally. Because Wally's the only one that makes sense. And it's like Jeremy Adams is the only one doing anything in his book that might actually change the status quo um, in the new annual They've been hinting that his wife has powers. She's kind of been hiding for a while, and nobody could figure out why. She finally told him, and come to find out, she thinks it's because she's pregnant. <gasps> and she's tapping into the baby's speed, speed force. Ew. I, was I, love gonna, I, I said ew too fast. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, ew because she's pregnant, or ew because the baby's speed force? Yeah, I, I was saying ew because she like you. She taps into the babies, and I'm like ew. What his mind, his body? Like what? What are you, what are you talking about? Speed force? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I like that idea. I think that's something new they can follow through with, and find out what's going on. It doesn't. So feel does like that mean that she can speak to it since they're on the same speed force or whatever? He's like, Mom, I want you to eat pizza. She's like, Yeah, okay, I'll get a pizza. Thanks. I don't think it's that deep. I don't think it's that deep. <laughs> that would be cool, though. But, like, it's the only one moving. Like, Batman, I like Batman, and I like Detective Comics, but it is very much so villain of the arc. Go on to the next arc. New bad bad guy. Villain of the arc. Go on to the next bad guy. And um, it's not moving or driving any sort of plot forward. It's not really changing or building the world that they live in. Now, I will say... Philip Kennedy Johnson's action comics we've had on War World for it feels like forever. That's probably not a good thing, but a long time. And it, and now we've finally got Clark coming back. What do you think is going to happen to the Son of Kal El title? Honestly, it could just be a forgotten title. Like they may not like even do more of it or whatever. Uh, though personally, I would be happy if they would continue it. Maybe try some other um, writers as well. Like Nightwing, he has a title, <laughs> and he was like, uh, you know, Batman's sidekick for a very long time. Now his own superhero. Uh, I want something like that for John. But since you know Superman's not gone, gone, he can be like a Superboy because, yeah. like, if if you know when Clark comes back. And they're like, Superman. And they both are like, yes. <laughs> well, I did see the other day that they're introducing a new villain. Because this last issue 
uh, I don't remember what number it was, but it finished up the Gamora stuff um, to a point. To a point. But I did see they're introducing a new villain, so I don't think that title's going anywhere. Like, well, I honestly writers, don't. I would love to see Peter Tomasi yes. write the character. And he just did in that Back to Bell Reeves storyline, the one that everybody yeah. was so upset about because they had a non-binary friend. That was I, I had a I had oh shoot I forgot my card ah oh, um uh, like my card decline for the saved by the bell Reeves whatever yeah and uh it was and I was like oh yeah I'll do it later uh, it's been two weeks I think I totally forgot <laughs> oh, no. I um that that story was by Peter Tomasi I think and they were young but Peter Tomasi has written John more than I think anybody else. That would be a really good suggestion. And I like Tom Taylor. Um, Tom is very good at slow storytelling. And I noticed not only does he do it in Son of Kal-El, but he also does it in Nightwing, where he'll set up like a kind of bad guy. But that one's going to be the main threat. But he's going to be in the background while you fight this bad guy and deal with this shit. And, and, and then by the end, you have to you know, take over uh, Gamora. He does something like that. And I think he's done a good job with the character, but I do, I do think it would be smart to hand that over, but also at the same time, it's Tom Taylor and that's kind of his baby. Like, I don't know that he would. I have but no I idea if he would either. I, and I still don't see, they just had a, uh, Jay get his super suit, so to speak. And then Dreamer crossover. I don't know. I don't think it's going anywhere. As much as people are rooting for it to fail, I don't think it's going anywhere. But they do need to, like, what? What can they even call them? Like. <laughs> like Captain Superboy, Obvious. Like, but Superboy is Connor to me. Super How teen? many Superboys that we got in this universe that are currently Superboy? Well, just Connor. Just Connor? We don't have another Superboy? I don't think so. Really? Unless you include unless you include John. Which one is Superboy Prime? That is Superboy from Earth Zero. Oh, so they're not but, in the same universe. No. After the end of Dark Knight's Death Metal, he was pushed back into his own universe. Hmm. Okay. Oh, we're getting the brave and the bold again. That's cool. Maybe. <gasps> More brave and the bold, but this time not Batman related. Yay! Yeah, it'll be maybe Wally and and Hal. I don't. Wally is it Barry or Barry? I meant Barry. I swear. Well, okay. they are the iconic duo, so that yeah, would but, make sense. But at the same time, they're also like. Boring. Shut your face. <laughs> <laughs> They're kind of boring. No, Hal's boring to me. Like, I feel like we should get a new Brave and Bold where we have like Wally and Rainer or Wally and I don't know. I've just been liking Wally lately. And I'm just not. That's because Wally's it. the best. So You know what though? Five years ago, Barry was my was my um Flash. And ever since I've been reading the stuff with uh, Jeremy Adams, I've been loving the character. The Jeremy Adams. So basically, we have no fucking answers. What's up with Nightwing? Uh, he's I don't know. Prominent. What's up with you? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't the UC, DC, yeah, yes, retcons, retcons and retcons, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. Can I don't know. A, a remix of that, if you could. <laughs> <laughs> Timelines with worlds and without dimensions in the area within the multiverse, within the omniverse, and the da, 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 status quo. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't see this. I don't know. Maybe it's just me being um Pessimist a little. Just yeah, <laughs> no, like for real. But I'm just not. I don't know. I just don't. I don't think this is actually going to. Here, they're they're guessing on who will be the yeah because we're gonna need a new Justice League writer because they're gonna have to relaunch Justice League altogether. 
Well, Chip Zdarsky would be a great one. Tom Taylor would also be a great. Tomasi would be great. Tom King? No, I'm I'm good on that. Can you guys not fight just for five minutes? Nah, it's it's the male energy. Um, Matthew Rosenberg, that would be great. Matthew Rosenberg. Uh, what did that person write? Uh, he has been writing the Grifter stuff. He's also writing DC vs. Vampires right now, which is so oh, good. That's what it reminded me of. I still have to catch up on that. That's such a good universe, too. Um, so basically, they have no idea. Oh, my God. Please. Please. They said, this isn't just a man's game. Dun, 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 dun. Maybe Becky Cloonan. No. No. Why the fuck would you want that to happen? What about Michael C. Conrad? No, stop it. <laughs> Are you talking to me or the cats? I was talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Michael C. Conrad? Uh, I doubt I've ever read any of their stuff. Uh, I believe it's her husband. They write together. Right now, they're on the Wonder Woman title. And they still and, write mediocre? Uh, yeah. And Batgirls. So I dropped off Batgirls early because I didn't care for the art. And I um, the storyline I wasn't super interested in. And I have heard a couple people say some good stuff about it. So I might have to go back. They also have Teeny Howard. I mean, probably not. She's good on one person. But no. <gasps> Think about it. Sean Gordon Murphy writing Wonder Woman. That'd be fucking awesome. Yeah. Get on it, DC. Megan Get on Fitz it, John. <laughs> Megan Fitzmartin. No. I do think if that happened, Megan fans would literally erupt. Do you remember that book she wrote that was terribly mean? Um, It's a Dark Crisis tie-in. What is it? Then most not likely the not, because I don't have any Dark Crisis tie-ins. That's why I'm getting the trade paperback. I learned from Dark Knight's Metal. Very, very smart. I may be selling my Dark Knight's Metal comics because just getting the tie-ins, looking for the tie-ins for that, extremely hard to find. Oh, yeah. And um, then I'll just get, like, the omnibus or whatever. <laughs> Megan Fitzmartin is the one that wrote the three ish, the three arc mini of uh, Tim coming out. And then Megan went on to, I don't, it's not called Multiversity. I think it's Teen Justice. I don't know. Um, it's one of those books, Young Justice, Dark Crisis, something, something, something. Um, she wrote a bunch of like, oh my god, just terrible care. Like she made Sissy such a bitch. Like I, Sissy was never my favorite character, but she made her absolutely terrible, and she made um Cassie Sandsmark just the most selfish, entitled little brat. No. Fans would riot. Stephanie Phillips, no. And is I like Stephanie Phillips, but um, I don't know how she would do. Yeah, uh, I guess she's been doing Grimm, which is a team book. I don't know. Grant Morrison, yes, please. Vita Ayla or Danny Laura, no, 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 <laughs> oh. If that's all you've got for us, I'm a little worried here, DC. Jason Aaron? Okay. I mean, I don't know. Jeff Johns? Okay. I'm totally in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, what is this? What is this? Another tie-in! I, I haven't gone over December solicitations. I'm going to do that on... Uh, Tuesday. That on to Thursday. Yeah. Tuesday. Um, But... We learned this week, Wade is the writer of Dark Crisis, The Big Bang, um, a December special that effectively celebrates the return of the infinite Earth's loss during the original crisis. It seems like a natural lead into the dog. Okay. Okay. What about Mark Wade? No, we're, you know what I mean? Like, why not Mark Wade? The work he's doing on um, World's Finest has even the biggest detractors praising him. Like, I don't think I've heard any single person say something bad about World's Finest. Have you? No, not not one. Why not Mark? Yeah, that, that's a perfect fit. 
Uh, the only thing I would see something negative is, is that if the person didn't like Mark Wade, Mark Wade himself. Yeah, and I've seen a little bit of that. Like, I won't support Mark Wade because of what he did to so and so and so and so. Okay, cool. Uh, but he's a good writer. Yeah, perfect. Mark Wade, we just did it. DC, you have to listen right now. <laughs> uh, the publishers refer to Wade as a comics legend and DC architect. Exactly! Exactly! So bring him on! This is a Lazarus volcano. That is so cool. Infect everybody. How come it has a... Is that the Superman's symbol on it? Yeah, I don't know why, but... Lazarus Pit, but with something Superman related. Hmm. I can dig it. Something... And I think that's what a lot of fans are craving. Like, at the end of the day, there's a lot of cool stuff that could happen with this DC launch. But I think, at least speaking for myself... I think we're all craving something just a little different. Just a little bit different. Like something that's going to maybe change the status quo. Something that's going to have consequences. I think when we're so used to bad guy of the week, rinse, repeat. Status quo. You know, the, the comics naturally are circular storytelling, right? That's just kind of how they are. But that's why I think the little things... Like, I love Alfred, but that little consequence was big. When you go back- That little that, consequence was big, yeah. <laughs> well, and even like, um, Iris might be pregnant. Not that that's a little consequence. I don't mean it like that, but like- <laughs> Changing something, skewing something, bringing in somebody, like in that title, they brought in Buddy's daughter! Oh, Like- just those little things I think fans crave. What, Like, when you go to get a new... Because you don't... You're a trade waiter, or at least for some things. And then, you know, you, you pick up the titles that, you, that you're really into. Why do you seek out those titles? What gets you interested? <sighs> I'm really bad at looking at writers. So I, I guess I would just research the writer first, or at least if I'm too lazy to research the writer, at least like uh, plot wise, mm -hmm. it should interest me. And uh, you... I, DC has been stepping up their art game lately. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen any bad art from D from DC in a, in a in a while now. Marvel is, I guess, is a hit or miss unless it's you know Carlos Gomez. <sighs> I mean, working on a new book right now. Woo! Something called the Tiger Division. I don't know what that is, but it has the word tiger. And I like tigers. So that book will be mine now. I have no idea what that is. Me neither. I mean, to be fair, I would say DC has a much better artist. But this art here was a lot of the reason. It was very, like, thick line and chunky. I couldn't take it, like... I love it, uh, to be you honest. <laughs> I love it so much. I, You know what? I should have realized that. Um, and it was very, like, the book was very much so made for a younger demographic. Oh, I thought um, you were going to say, like, weirdos. And I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll take it. Yeah, that too, that too. <laughs> uh, but DC has, like, the best artists. And I, I don't think there's a book I really ever worry about when it comes to art. But, like... I think now I'm getting to a point where I'm being much more selective. Which is a, a great thing, to be honest. And not only that, but I fucking love, like, I, like saying I love it is an underestimate. The DC Webtoons. They are everything I've hoped for for so long when it comes to the Outlaws, Satana, like actually getting to see Bumblebee. In the title, like, even if she's not Yay. Bumblebee yet, but, like, those books, why, it makes me irritated because if they can exist on a Webtoon platform, what's the excuse for not having such good books through your floppies? Hmm. <laughs> That's such a dumb word. Floppies. <laughs> have you kept up with them? My The floppies I have now? No, the Webtoons. No. Nah. I'm too I'm trying to like get some recording done but I'm so lazy to do that because I've been working 
a majority of nights. Well, I don't know. I it's just <coughs> it's frustrating to read them because it's like not frustrating because I really do like them and they're really good. But also like hire these people. Hire these people. What are you thinking? Like Artemis is a fucking <laughs> badass. I love her. Like we've got a Vixen title that is really good and involves other characters. Yes, I am in. Like you've got more peace boy. I, I know, and I love and I love like the little like manga faces they make. Like where they yeah, I, you can definitely tell I, the inspiration. Yeah, and I, it's really good. And there's so there's no excuse. No excuse. There's, that's right. There's no excuse why they can't actually handle that on a scale of floppies. Now, if they brought back uh, Dark Knight's Death Metal, I would love it. I loved those books. You read all of that, you said, right? Which ones? As I asked you, I went to took a drink. Go figure. Uh, Dark Knight's Death Metal. I read... Uh, I don't even know if it was a good chunk of those... I read some of those and then I was so into being like a completist. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to finish until I get the entire thing. And then I realized I never got the full thing. And I'm like, mother crapper. I loved like the influence. Uh, I just, I like the different Batman, the way that they, they had like a fucking T-Rex Batman. It was so fucking cute. Not very helpful, but adorable. Like, and then they had, did you ever see Robin King? Were you introduced to him yet? He was in the latter part of it, I think. Could you repeat that again? Were you ever introduced? Um, I think it was in the latter half, so you might not have been, to Robin King? Yeah, uh, yeah I I remember uh, getting that. I still so good. So I good and it, so then. brutal. As it should be. I don't know. It's frustrating as a DC fan until I think we get some more information out there. There's not much. Like, there's literally nothing. Oh, there's going to be a reboot, but we don't know if it's a hard reboot or a soft reboot. We don't know what's going to happen to it. We really, like, when I was on um, uh, Comics Elite, must have been last week, um, all of us were just royally confused. Not a single one of us understood, like, like, <laughs> if it was hyper time, how this worked, what multiverse we were in, why we were in this multiverse. Like, you have to have a degree in DC to understand all of the different logistics. And I'm pretty sure, like, I'm going to put money on this here, that the only person that actually knows all those different logistics is Robert. I'm going to put money on it. <laughs> and... I should be able to pick up a book and understand it. That's also extremely frustrating, especially if somebody doesn't read everything. That's, yeah, I agree. But there's still good titles. Like, you should be reading Son of Kal-El. Are you caught? Did you read the last issue? Um, I'm waiting for it to come in. I figured. I probably should. <laughs> you said I figure because I'm I'm behind because I get it <laughs> and, uh, I'm being bullied. I'm sorry. No, I just meant because you're really good about like being patient for your books to come in, and I'm like I need to read it digitally right now. I have very uh, little patience. I would love to have a digital pull list. <laughs> it's easy. Like honestly, it's super easy, and um organized that's what i like because i'm the most unorganized person in real life so it organizes it for me <laughs> like my shit would be everywhere everywhere so out of the um characters that they mention out of coming out of the dawn of the dceu or e <laughs> dcu whatever what character do you want them to put spotlight on more Aquaman. Arthur or Jackson? Not Jackson. Yeah. Arthur. Because, uh, like, anybody other than Aquaman is always perceived as, like, cool. So we need more Aquaman. Yeah. I think so, too. And I think, like, 
Were you a fan of when they did like we're both Aquaman kind of thing? Like you're Aquaman too? No way. Yeah, like with Jackson, how they did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I don't know. Like I'm not sure I feel about that. I still think it's weird. I wasn't a. I don't know. Um, I think I would like to see them. Like I love all the main characters that they list. Like the six big ones. I do. I like them all. But I would like to see more influence put on to. Um, and I know they kind of are, and that's what sucks. This is going to come out really dickish, but the Amazons, um, but written by a better writer. <laughs> like I, I want to, <laughs> like I want to care. I really like Nubia. I really, really like Yara. I love Donna Troy. These are all phenomenal characters. You could build up the Amazons in a very similar fashion to how they built up Bat Family if you had the correct writer. But you don't have the correct writer because it's a it's a trash fire. It's a trash <laughs> fire. Like the whole like trial of the Amazons, oh my god, who killed them? Oh wait, just kidding. It was all planned all along. Like what? Stop it. Stop it with this bullshit. Actually make it make sense. But then again, it's I think it's still Vita Ayala, right? Uh maybe. <laughs> Pretty sure it is. And you know what? Another thing that I think is kind of um could happen could so Sasov is bringing the hammer down right he's bringing that hammer down on the every department and i do think that they are maybe a cl not cleaning of house but like performance evaluation like you would have it at any other job like okay you go in the office. Let's take a look at what books you got. You've got, you know, if you're Tom Taylor, you've got Nightwing and Son of Kal-El and Darkest, Dark Knight's Death Metal. Or no. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Um, Dark Knights of Steel is what I meant to say. Um, how are these books performing? Okay, they're above average or of average. Okay, try this, try that. You know, but Vita Ayla goes in there. And if they actually go by performance... <laughs> <laughs> I'll cut that. I'm not saying I want to see the person out of work, but maybe just work at IDW <laughs> or something. Does that mean like I didn't want my characters good? She only did that one book you like, and that was the Wonder Woman anthology or something. Vita? Yes. No, oh, she's not been doing all of the am well. Not the main Wonder Woman book, but she's doing all of the Nubia and the Amazons and the Coronation. Mm. She did one in the Coronation Oh, that's special. right. Um, I'm, I hope I got the Coronation in. I don't remember. <laughs> Though I am uh, one of the minorities that is enjoying Nubia and the Amazons. Yeah. I, I mean, Not that I don't have criticism, of course. Right. And that's fair. But I made it through four issues. I tried. I think it was more like I was bored like it wasn't like bad it wasn't terrible it was boring and i don't buy a book for boring like i'll just go back and read hikatea or something i'll go back and uh, you don't have a huge choice with nubia but um i'll go back and read some of my favorite wonder woman books like no lies or anything like but i think if they do performance evaluations we'll start to see and up in the game. Because DC, out of all the companies, pays the best. So these people are going to want to retain their jobs, right? Mm -hmm. um, even in that interview with Sean, he was like, I won't go to Marvel. They won't pay me what, I'm, what I want paid, so I don't go. Um, but I think once, once we start to see a little bit of like, not necessarily even, you don't even have to fire anybody. I don't mean that. What I mean is just tighten the rings a little bit. Make them understand that um, these characters 
need to have, you know, you can tell a story. You can be, I don't even, I'm not even one of those persons that cares if it's political. I don't give a shit about any of that. Tell a good story. That's all I care about. And we've got to, like, they put all of their A talent, and rightfully so, on books like Detective, Batman, Action, Superman. But Wonder Woman should also be in that line. Like, that's cool. The, yeah, that's the holy trinity. Like, you should not, if you're going to have somebody that's Chip Zdarsky level of good on Batman and Rom V for Detective Comics, you should have somebody at least equal to their level of writing, like, on Wonder Woman. You just should. Like, that should be the character I want to read all the fucking time, and I can't stand reading it at this point. Have you read any of Becky Clunan and Michael Conrad stuff? Mm, I don't think so. My girl. My girl. <laughs> so, like, and then they change weird things. Like, Dead Man, to my understanding, his power set was always he was able to, like, go in your body if you were alive to take over. But they changed it so, like, he could animate dead people. It was just, they do silly things like that that I don't understand. <laughs> I know I'm picking. I know I am. But it's not because I, not even because I, I'm being, you know, some outrageous jerk. No, it's because I want the best for these characters. And I put my hard-earned fucking money into it. And it's frustrating. <laughs> it is frustrating. I just became the asshole. Sorry. I'm okay with that. For right now. For right now. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay, is there anything we missed? Because we went into this knowing nothing and still, guess what? No nothing! <laughs> we need better articles. I don't I don't think it was the article. I think it was the press release. We need it info. Was... We need more info. Yeah. Yep, there's a, there's a reboot. We don't know what it's actually going to do, what's going to happen, or who's going to be in it. But guess what? There's a reboot. Like, that's it. <laughs> Big changes come in. How many times have you heard that? Oof. Uh, a long time. That is one good thing I will say about uh, manga. Is that they don't do the reboot upon reboot, really. And uh, they don't depends. Trigun is having its own reboot now. Uh, I believe it's coming out this year or next year. But this time it's going to actually be following the manga. What's Trigon? Oh. Besides Raven's daddy. What? <laughs> I said besides Raven's daddy. Oh. <laughs> okay. So Trigon is actually spelled differently. Oh. Uh, when I first watched it, which was, I think, last year for the very first time. This was like in the 90s that it came out. It's about it's it's like a western kind of um in like post apocalyptic um there's this guy named Vash the Stampede uh he wears this uh do you know you know Devil May Cry right yes so think of a guy in a large red trench coat and he has two guns and he's extremely good at it at at the guns and everything but he was also an extremely like comedic character and uh something happened and um people think he's a criminal and he's always been getting blamed for stuff he didn't do and so i uh, if it's like oh if you find him you get oh shoot what do they call it one billion double dollars like they say double dollars and i'm like what the freak is double dollars i don't <laughs> understand it so you know that sign for the money sign? You know, it's like an S and then a slash yeah. in the middle. So it's both two of those, you know, double dollars. <laughs> oh my. And um, there's these two girls and they're like reporters in a way. And so their whole thing is to like report on what they've seen and uh, to see if he really is the one causing all the trouble. And I remember watching it for the first time. It's like this pretty average sized girl and this huge tall girl and they're i believe they're going to a bar and you see all these guys looking at them and i think they were like thinking of like <laughs> look at these girls blah 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 and then for the tall girl she has a huge trench coat 
a big gigantic uh machine gun of some sort drops I did not from think her you were pocket. Gonna say <laughs> <laughs> you said in a big gigantic and i'm like oh my god how big are her boobs but go ahead <laughs> I mean, her boobs are kind of big, <laughs> but not like over exaggerated or anything. I, I, like, it's not a machine gun. I totally forgot what it's called, but it, it just falls out of her pocket trench coat, whatever. And all the guys are like, what the crap? And she's like, oh, sorry. And then she lifts it up, no problem. And I'm like, gosh, dang, this girl is strong. But she's also like ditzy. <laughs> she's not smart, oh, but she's no. adorable. Um, after we're like watching it with my brother and we're like, oh my gosh, we loved it so much. I'm now realizing this year that that was not accurate to the manga at all <laughs> and that the manga is actually pretty freaking serious and oh, wow. much more harsh than what i saw and i'm like holy crap you're lying he wasn't like this no way i'm like well now i gotta see it i think it's gonna be on netflix i can't i don't remember if it's gonna be on netflix or country Wall. his hair is different i don't know how i feel about that uh the animation looks good i just hate 3d personally Oh yeah, uh, Johnny M. Bosch played the character as well. You know that's when he sounded like much younger, and I'm like, oh, I feel old just listening to this. Um, but honestly, it related to me the character because he ha he actually doesn't want to hurt people. He doesn't want to kill anybody, and uh, um, it like related to me as like a Christian is like, you're a bad guy, but I don't, I don't want to hurt you. <laughs> I don't want to kill you. So right. like he does everything he can to like uh, prevent that. And he even has a whole slogan. I believe it's um, love and peace. Uh, and he kind of like, you know how when you are telling somebody, yeah, I'll do this. And then they put their hands behind their back and kind of like cross their fingers. Yeah. Oh yeah. So the crossed fingers is his trademark. I guess. <laughs> and he says, love That's and peace, cool. love and peace. Yeah. You know, and, and it's like, uh, I remember, was it the movie or was it the series when he killed somebody for the very first time to save his friends, which were the girl reporters. And he was just like having a huge crying bit about it. And he's like, oh my gosh, I killed somebody. I'm a sinner too. And I'm like, yo, bro, <laughs> I relate to you so much, man. <laughs> Obviously, he didn't kill nobody. But I feel like if, if I were to kill somebody, I don't think I can handle that. Oh, yeah. So now that I'm hearing that it's completely different from the manga and that this is adapting from the manga, I'm like, okay, let's see how this goes. I still like Trigun. I'm excited to see how he is in the actual source material uh what else had a reboot there's a lot of animes that had a reboot uh promise neverland needs a freaking reboot they butchered that second season uh or in high school host club that also needs a reboot because they just changed so much stuff from the original and i'm like you didn't need to do this you didn't need to do that you do not need to add this beach episode okay uh <laughs> it doesn't need a second season it needs a reboot fruits baskets fruits basket had its reboot sailor moon had its reboot uh what else had a reboot i'm pretty sure there's a lot more that would, had a reboot would that uh re uh tokyo ghoul count tokyo ghoul needs a reboot <laughs> yeah it does but i mean would that count as kind of a reboot when they did that third season? Oh, no. The third season, they just, like, they took so much crap out of that. Like, when I was watching the third season, I still need to finish it. But, like, the very first episode, you see a guy with, like, black and white hair. And I'm like, who the frick are you? And then people, as soon as that came episode came out, people were like, you really going to ignore how he became like that you're just gonna show him like that like you're not gonna show how he became like that like why for what reason yeah yeah <laughs> and i was super confused so i had to read up on about it and how he became that way and i'm like oh okay why did they not put that in that's pretty important in my opinion yeah absolutely but yeah I, yeah i guess you're right i didn't think about it i don't know enough that's why i always ask you the question no, that's about fine <laughs> i mean there's a uh, lot of um shows where like the anime came later or right. the anime came first but the show is completely different from the source material i believe people are wanting a um a soul eater reboot too a what soul eater 
Sure. Yeah. Oh, okay, uh, same guy who created uh, Fire Force. Oh, okay. All right. But Soul Leader is a lot better story wise. Gotcha. At least I'm sort of know what you're talking about. <laughs> he literally is using a similar character design. I mean, once you get used to making one, wouldn't you kind of follow that temp? I don't know. I don't know. He's about to retire after Fire Force is done. Hopefully. Um, I always hear about how impoverished some of them are. Impover? Impoverished. How, like, they don't get paid what they should. Oh, no. I'm pretty sure he's getting a lot of money from... Maybe not as much. Not, not really. But I think the reason he's going to be retiring early is because of the new... Maybe not new management is not the word, but what was going on with the industry. And it's like, you know what? Like, I've only made, I think he's only made less than five mangas. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, like, you're really going to stop after this? After this one? You sure? You got money, bro? Or like, what are you going <laughs> to do now? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. No kidding. But we're going to wrap up, guys. Uh, make sure you subscribe to Bianca's channel. It will be in the description. And is there anything we missed? Before? I think I asked that, but. Nah, I think we're good. Yeah. <laughs> we will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.